H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Okay, participants, we'll get started with the session. Now, before I start the session, a couple of instructions to all of you. All the participants will be on mute. And in case you have any questions, you're going to use a chat box. Okay, so all of you, please don't click on that mute and unmute button. Now, this is Priya here from H2K Infosys. I'm going to be the faculty for this batch. And then um, this is my email address, priya at h2kinfosys.com. In case you have any sort of technical issues, you have to call this number 770-777-1269, okay? Rabia, this is my email address. Please send me a reminder mail in case you need any sort of assistance. So this is a software testing course participants that we are conducting. And after the completion of this course, you'll be able to work as a software tester, okay? Now, every software that is developed, it should undergo the testing process before we release it to the client. Can you tell me, participants, what do you understand by software testing? All of you can use a chat box, okay? And tell me, what do you understand by software testing? You can write your answers on the chat box. Yes, tell me, what do you understand by software testing? So testing is all about identifying the defects in the software and also verify the compliance of the software. with the client requirements, okay? So this is how we define the testing. It's not just to identify the defects, but we should also make sure that we are meeting the requirements of the client. Now, testing is done by the different members of the IT project team at the different steps of the software development lifecycle. So the type of testing that is done by QA we call it as system testing, okay? So the type of testing that is done by QA, we call it as a system testing. Now all of you please go through this, make a note, and then we will see with the project example today. We'll take up some project examples, all right? And I will tell you what we are going to do. So just go through this. So now we are developing the software for the client, right? For whom are we developing the software? The software is being developed by the client. So from the client, it is the business analyst who will gather all the requirements and then share it with the IT project team. Wherein we have the project managers, we have the architects, we have the developers, we have the QAs, all right? So we have the different people here in the IT project team, all right? Who will take the requirements from the business analyst and then use it for the software development. So we have the QA here. As a QA, you're supposed to do the testing. And in order to do the testing, first of all, you should have the good understanding about the requirements that are gathered by the business analyst. So as a QA, you're supposed to do the testing. And in order to do the testing, first of all, you need to understand the requirements of the client. And we call this as analysis. So in today's session, I'm going to show you how to analyze the requirements. In what format you're going to get the requirements from the business analyst. How the document will look like, okay? And as a QA, how you need to go through it and then understand the requirements in order to do the system testing, okay? Now, all of you, please go through this. Let me know if you have any questions in this.
I'll wait for a minute. If you have any questions, please let me know. Okay, so Daniel, if you want to attend the BA classes, all right, you can attend it in parallel with this QA course itself. So what you do, call this number, our training coordinators will assist you in order to join the sessions, okay? You can attend it parallelly. Talk to our training coordinators, they will help you. If you have any other questions that are related to the current topic, you can please ask. Now participants, I will show you how the document you are going to get from the business analyst. Um, see, Daniel, if you have the questions that are related to, you know, materials, videos, schedule, the different courses that you want to enroll, okay, please call this number. Our team will help you. Otherwise, you can drop an email to me on this email address, all right? So, please make sure that you ask the questions that are related to the current topic only, okay? Fine. So, now... Uh, I'll show you how the document will look like. All of you, please look at my screen. Now from the client, the business analyst will gather all the requirements and then share it with the IT project team, right? And all this information will be documented in the functional specification document. Functional specification document. So this is the FST, which is prepared by the business analyst. And then this document has all the details about the requirement. Explained using the mock-up diagram. So each and every requirement here, it is explained in detail using the mock-up diagram. And what is this mock-up diagram? This is how the mock-up diagram looks like. It is not a screenshot, of course. It's a diagrammatic representation of how the software should look like on the screen of the user. So based on the information that is gathered by the business analyst, the BA has created this kind of diagrams, okay, which will give everybody the same visualization regarding the software, okay. And then we have this requirement ID FRO1, functional requirement 1. So this is for the unique identification of the requirements. It is for the unique identification of the requirements, okay? And the requirement ID is created by the business analyst. And do you see these username and password? So these are the input specifications. So what are the different input fields and what kind of information is being accepted by them? For example, username that is accepted, it should be alphanumeric, lowercase between four to eight characters. So all this kind of detailed information has to be gathered from the client by the business analyst and it has to be explained like this by the business analyst in this, speci uh, in this functional specification document. And as a QA, you're going to use this document in order to do the preparation for the testing. And on the other hand, the architects and developers will use this document in order to do the design and development of the software, okay? So you can go through this participants. I'll wait for a minute. Let me know if you have any questions. Anybody has any questions, let me know. Take a screenshot of this one and let me know if anybody has any questions. Okay, so let me clear the screen now and I will also check the questions here from the chat box. Does the BA manage the QA team? Can the QA do the work of the BA? 
see the ba role and qa role they are separate as per the standards the ba role is separate qa role is separate okay as a business analyst the person will meet the client and gather the project information and qa will do the testing okay so these are the two separate roles but now in uh, these days what's happening is in most of the projects we hire the participant i mean we hire the candidates who can perform the multiple task okay so that we can save the cost of the project now to the testers we can assign the role of a ba and ask them to gather the requirements from the client and to the ba we can ask them to do some kind of testing by assigning the qa role okay so this is possible anyways but then there are two separate roles what do you mean by a mock up diagram so do you see this kind of diagram here marcos this is the mock up diagram it's a diagrammatic representation of how the software should look like on the screen of the user so based on the information that is given by the client the ba prepares this kind of diagrams so that everybody in the team will have the same visualization regarding the software okay so everybody should have the same visualization does a ba need to sorry ba need the approval of the mock up diagram by the client yes so whatever documents are created by the business analyst they will be first of all sent to the client the client will go through it confirm that whatever the ba has created the requirements okay it is correct and it is as per the expectation all right so all the documents that are created by the business analyst yes they will be given to the client so that the client will see them and verify that the ba has understood everything correctly as per the requirements okay now let's consider the simple example of the gmail login to start with the gmail login page opens with url in the browser www.gmail.com the username password text box and then sign in button appear all right and then we try to identify the different possibilities here enter valid username and password so as a qa you should try to identify the different possibilities to use the software click sign in button now can you tell me what is the expected outcome or what is the expected output here if the user enters valid username and password and clicks on the sign in button what is the expected behavior from the software the account opens with inbox correct okay the account opens with inbox then we also try entering the invalid username and password because there are possibilities that sometimes the users don't enter the correct username and password they enter something that is invalid by mistake so what should be the response of the system in this case what happens if the user enters invalid username and password the account does not open and error message is displayed okay fine the next possibility username and password are blank and then you click on the sign in button again the account does not open 
error message is displayed. So you can test with the different possibilities here. Username valid, password invalid, username is valid, sorry invalid, password is valid, username is valid, password is blank, username is blank, password is valid. Stay signed in. Reset password. Okay. So these are the different possibilities that we can identify. Fine. So if we go on identifying the possibilities like this, yes, we can make a big list. And also, do you see, this is a simple functionality wherein we have only two input fields, username and password. What if we have the complex functionalities? There are so many steps, there are so many possibilities. And if we go on testing this kind of detailed testing, do you think there will be sufficient time available? Testing. All right. The time that is given for the testing is limited. You cannot go on testing forever identifying each and every possible combination of the data and testing for each and every data value. Practically, that is not possible. Okay. Then how do you decide how much testing has to be done? It is decided on two factors. One is the risk and then the second one is the time, the duration that is given to you for the testing. Okay. Now, what is this risk? It is possibility of failure or let's say the possibility of some unexpected event that might happen. Okay. And who will decide how much of testing has to be done? It is decided by the test leader. Test leader will decide how much time we have to spend on the different functionalities in order to do the testing, how much of testing has to be done. The effort estimation will be done by the test leader. Based on two factors, one is the risk and another is the time that is available for testing. Okay. Now, for example, if you consider this Gmail login, it is a very simple functionality right a very simple functionality the program that is written here in the back end by the developers also will be very simple the developer has to just check the username and password validate the username and password based on that display the result if it is valid display the inbox otherwise display some error message so do you see this is such a simple program that is to be written by the developer all right and that is why there are less number of possibilities that this person, I mean the developer might commit any kind of errors. Means the possibility of failure is very less here. The risk is less and hence we spend less time in order to test this kind of simple functionalities. Let's consider another example. online payment so there are so many different methods of making the payment you can pay through paypal you can pay through your cards you can pay through the net banking you can pay through the google wallet okay there are so many different ways of making the payment and each of them have the different set of steps again okay consider the net banking there are so many different banks based on the bank that is chosen by the user. Again, there are different steps here. PayPal, it has a different set of steps. Paying through your credit cards or sometimes debit cards. Sometimes you apply the gift cards. All right. So there are different kind of cards through which you can make a payment. So do you see this is such a complex functionality based on the option that is chosen by the user at every step the further steps will be different. So it means that a complex programming has to be done by the 
developers and there are possibilities of more number of errors in it the risk is high and also the time that is taken in order to do the testing is also very high okay the time that is taken for the testing is also going to be very high so this is how the estimation has to be done now given the timeline based on the risk that is involved here we should identify how much of time has to be spent for each functionality or requirement in order to do the testing okay so now participants i'll give you 5 minutes all of you please read the content on my screen carefully word by word you read everything in case you have any questions please write your questions on the chat box and we will take up all the questions together after 5 minutes okay so all of you please go through this make a note or take a screenshot and write your questions on the chat box and after this we are going to do some class assignments let me copy the questions here from the chat box what if there is a security emergency so the security related issues we tested separately in the security testing okay so we are going to conduct a different type of testing which is called as a security testing and here we are going to check all the security related features okay as of now we are not going to do any testing here we are just trying to read the document that is given to us and then we are trying to understand the document here all right we are not writing any kind of test cases here this is not any formal document that is being written here on the screen so this is just the understanding of the requirements all right only for your uh, convenience i am writing it here on the screen but otherwise you have to simply read the specification document that is given to you and you are supposed to understand and also we are not doing any kind of testing here does it fall under the spiral model so jaya this kind of documents you are going to get in all the models okay from the waterfall model to every model that we have okay you are going to get this kind of document which has the details of the requirements and as of now as i mentioned we are not doing any kind of testing we are just trying to read the document and understand the requirements and only for your convenience i am writing it here on the screen what is it about the online payments that make it complex rather than a simple program because there are many possibilities there are different ways of making the payment based on the option that is chosen by the user at every step the further steps will be different okay that is why it's complex there are too many steps involved there are too many possibilities involved and also there are too many fields in which the user has to enter the information all right that's why it is complex what if you are a qa for the amazon and there is a problem with the paypal what do you do in the situation so if there is a problem in the paypal payment you just report the defect to the developer okay so any kind of problems with the software report it to the developer your task is done okay so this is what you have to do as a qa report the defect to the developer so now let's do some more examples we will do some class assignments now do you see we have one more example here on my screen okay there is an example here on my screen now i want you to read this one and try to write analysis for this example on your computer okay please don't write the answers on the chat box on your computer you write the analysis for this example number 3 i'll give you 5 minutes for this task read everything carefully and write the analysis okay and i will give you the answers here in the class itself so that you can verify 
anything you can use daniel use a notepad word document or write it on some paper whatever is convenient to you so everybody please try this everybody is done okay so now i'll give the solution whenever you get this specification document the first thing that you are supposed to do is read it carefully and understand the requirements you may have to read it more than once you might have some kind of doubts in this document so you will contact the business analyst if you need more clarifications or more information or in case if you have any doubts you are going to contact the business analyst okay so this is the verizon wireless telecom project and the application opens with www.verizonwireless.com this is a name of the requirement store locator the store locator functionality appears on the top menu of the home page of the verizon wireless and the search is based on the two fields here the zip code which will accept the five digit zip code it is a text box and then you can choose a state from the list box so here we have this text box we have the all condition and then we have the list box and then we have the find store button you enter the invalid zip code store details will not be displayed in case if you are entering the valid zip code or if you are choosing the state from the list box the store details are getting displayed here in the given format So this is the store locator requirement. Now there are different possibilities here that are already mentioned. Invalid zip code. And then we have the zip code that is valid and choose state also valid. So this is valid zip code or choose state. And then zip code and choose state both of them blank. And here the store details are not displayed and then all the fields are reset. So these are the possibilities. And as a QA, you can identify the different possibilities like this for the testing. If there are more possibilities, yes, you can identify them. Now I have a question to all of you. I've written for zip code invalid and zip code valid. Okay. Can you tell me participants why we have not written the possibility as choose state invalid? Why we have not written a separate possibility for invalid choose state? Can you tell me? Because do you see this is a list box? Okay, this is a list box. All right. All the options that will be available under this one, they will be valid options that can be chosen by the user. The user cannot choose any invalid choose state here because that option is not available. And also very important thing that you have to notice or condition. So as a QA, you should start looking at the requirements in more depth more detail more delicately okay so do you see there is a or condition means you either enter a zip code or choose a state you cannot enter both of them at the same time it will not allow okay either the zip code is accepted 
or the two state. So whatever will be the latest entry will be considered to display the output. Clear? So this is how you should identify the possibilities. As a QA, once this requirement document is given to you, you have to read it carefully and understand the requirements. Any questions still here, participants? Anybody has any questions in whatever we discussed till now? No, you need not send anything for the class assignments because the class assignments will be verified here in the class itself. As a QA, should we generate all the valid and invalid possibilities? Yes, you should. That's what you're supposed to do actually. That's your main task. Should we check if the state options are valid as well? Yes, you can check. whether all the states are getting displayed and whether they are valid or not. Yes, you can check that as one of the possibility. And then so if you write both at the same time, will it display? It will display the store details with the latest entry. Okay, with whatever the latest entry the person has made, the store details will be displayed. Okay. Yes. This is how you write the answers. Okay, participants. See, analysis is not actually written Gita. It is only for your understanding. I'm writing it here on the screen. But otherwise, you're supposed to read and understand the requirements in this manner. Yes, you can refer to the mock-up diagram. You can refer to the description that is provided. If there is any other form of information that is given, so you can refer to that as well. So the basic idea is understanding the requirements. Okay. So you have to read this specification document and then understand the requirements to identify the possibilities. Will we do the mock QA work? Yes, definitely, Daniel. This is a job-oriented course. All right. So you're definitely going to have the hands-on practice on all the different test documents and then the testing tools. Okay, fine then. So participants, this is what we had to discuss in today's class. To give you the recap, we have discussed the analysis of the requirements and we have taken two project examples over here. In the future classes, we will be working on more projects. We will be creating more real test case documents. So we are going to end the session today. All right. Thanks everyone.